My name's Michael Harvey. I'm COO at Cora. We are headquartered in New York. We have offices in LA, London, Bangalore, and Kochi. And we are a full service digital commerce agency. We specialize in, in working with fashion, lifestyle, and beauty brands. And our particular focus is helping those, uh, those clients of ours deliver unified customer experiences to their customers. And so that's, that's uh, gonna be a nice segue right into, um, into the talk here. So <clears throat> just to orient us briefly, here's what I'm gonna do. Um, I'm gonna give a quick how we got here, where we are today in our, in our industry. And then I'm gonna do death by statistics, overwhelm you guys with some, uh, some statistics, which is um, essential at these things. Then I'm give you, gonna give you a framework for thinking about this, this thing called the unified customer experience. And then finally, I'm gonna break it down and give you a roadmap for how to actually implement that. And I'm gonna base that around some of our own um, customers so, so you can um, see what it looks like to um, really put that into gear here. Okay, so um, there's no question that we're in the middle of a, of a revolution. Um, the term gets overused, so it may be just the case that we're in this new normal where we're seeing very, very rapid change driven by technology. But what exactly is the nature of this, of this revolution? So as Elizabeth said, I've had the good fortune to be at every single Imagine since they started six years ago, went to the first one, um, and it was food trucks in the Magento parking lot. But what was really cool about it is there was just this buzz um, at the event. We really all felt like we were at the, at the center of the universe there. And what we were kind of celebrating there was this new, relatively new platform, Magento, that, that delivered enterprise level e-commerce capabilities to sort of mere mortal merchants, if you will, capabilities that really had only been available to very large merchants prior to that. But we were still only talking about one channel. It was all about e-commerce. E um, but so, you know, this great thing uh, happening where, where it, was, it was really this power to the people kind of moment, right? Where it wasn't just Nordstrom's and, and people like, like that who could do that stuff. So you roll forward a little bit and we start talking about this term multi-channel. And it's kind of a trivial and obvious observation that merchants have multiple channels that they use to sell to clients. But the notion was beginning to emerge that, well, these channels should maybe work together, right? And that there's technology and, and business solutions that, that uh, can, can help with that. And so pretty much every merchant in this, in this room, whether you, you think that way or not, is multiple, multi-channel. Because I'll assume all of you guys have websites. Hopefully those websites are mobile optimized. If they're not, you need to make them so. But so now you have a mobile channel. If you have an app, that's another channel. If you tweet or blog or post on Facebook, you have a social channel. And then if you start thinking about um, uh, stores, right, you have um, another channel there, namely physical, physical um, retail. So even if you're a pure online play or you think of yourselves as a pure online play, you, you are multi-channel. So um, roll forward again. And so we go from multi-channel to omni-channel, right? All of us have heard omni-channel, 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 omni-channel. Um, the first use of that term was actually in 2011 in a Harvard Business Review article. And um, it sort of breathlessly started out with this digital retail is quickly morphing into something so different that it requires a new name, omni-channel retailing. And here's the, here's the, uh, the quote that caught people's eyes, which it just lists off all these different engagement points that a retailer has to, has to try and, and have. Um, and merge this into that word, remember that word, seamless and then omnichannel. So that's the, as far as I can tell, that's the, the first use of, of uh, that term omnichannel. Now no one was happy with the term. It's awkward, but it does express the intent of, of uh, the idea, which was that all these proliferating channels work together. Um, thinking about sort of that notion of the revolution, really until relatively recently, it was only companies like Nordstrom's that could deliver a true omni-channel solution. They had the, 
the money and the internal technology and the operational sophistication to, to make um, uh, some of this happen. But once again, Magento is really jumping in here and changing the game. So as we started to hear about this morning, um, and I encourage you to go out into the marketplace, we're gonna be learning more about this as well as we go. Magento is now not just a digital commerce platform, but it's also adding in mCommerce, which is an order management system, and, and then as part of that, their retail associate platform. And so you're starting to get the beginnings of, of uh, a unified commerce platform, which we're going to talk about here shortly. So, you know, again, kudos to Magento for, for moving the ball forward. And, um, you know, the revolution continues. So ironically, this term omnichannel, I was told coming into this that um, I really shouldn't use the word omnichannel because it was kind of, it was sort of a no-no. It was so overused. And, and I really do agree with that. Um, so let, let's try not to, not to use that, but let me explain why. Omni literally means all, of all places or all things, and so clearly a retailer or merchant can't possibly be all things to, to uh, all people. So, you know, I'm just going to click through here and throw up some of these, these places that you might have to be trying to, uh, to think about engaging with your customers. So... When, when you look at this, what we're really talking about is where is the buy button going to be located? That's really what we're talking about here. And, and depending on what kind of merchant you are, what kind of customers you have, that answer is going to be different. Just this morning, literally this morning, I was running on the treadmill and they have this beautiful 21 inch touch screen with, and I'm not kidding you, a web browser and a soft keyboard on it. I could literally be on that damn thing ordering products <laughs> while I'm having my workout. Now that may, may make a lot of sense if you're selling yoga pants or something like that, but if you're selling airplane parts, that's probably not a channel that you have to worry about. So, um, okay, it's not omni. Another word that, that I just hate is uh, seamless because there are things that you can do in a retail environment that simply don't make sense to try and do online and, and vice versa. So this notion of of, of uh, seamless, I think, is a, is a very sloppy word. So I'm gonna, we're not going to use that one. Coherent, that's a, that's a possible candidate, but it doesn't really have a nice ring to it. Coherent customer experience, it just doesn't have that uh, je ne sais quoi. Um, integrated, possibly as well. These are all kinds of things that, uh, that are starting to, to suggest what, we, what, we get at, uh, what we're looking for here. Digital. Has anyone ever heard of that? Hand up if you've ever heard that term. Okay, good. Um, this was coined by someone at Bain. It's a combination of digital and physical. I think it's incredibly goofy. <laughs> I hope that person is not out in the audience there, but clearly this term did not uh, uh, get traction, so we're gonna, we're gonna get rid of that one. Branded, personalized, these are good terms because they actually have within them the concept that the content um, and brand should extend into and be coherent across all these different, different channels. But again, I don't think it's a, a particularly strong word. So really, the word that I think we're, we're looking for is unified. And you're, gonna, you're starting to hear that already a lot at this, at this conference and, and uh, other, other events. And the reason why it's such a much better word than omnichannel is because it's very much customer-centric, right? When you think about it, channels are something that really exist because of siloed, sort of um, historical reasons within a business, that there's siloed technology and operational um, and cultural things that have kept this notion of channels alive, but where you think about um, unified, and specifically a unified customer experience, now we're in the world of the customer. One of the themes I think you're gonna hear um, all over the place at this, at this conference, and also is a key theme of, of this talk here, is this, this need to be um, very customer focused. So uh, that's kind of where we are today. We've gone through single channels, multi-channels, omni-channels, unified. So that's what we're all trying to deliver here. That's what my company, Cora, with my colleagues uh, work on delivering, and that's what um, customers are increasingly asking, and therefore that's the, 
the um, challenge to, to you guys. And again, if you think about this evolutionary, evolution in terminology also reflects this evolution that we've seen in our industry and also reflects Magento's evolution as a, as a product going from really a single channel e-commerce product to now a platform of uh, related, tech, uh, 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 you know, techno related technologies that all come together into a unified um, so why, so one of the themes we're talking about here is retail um, as, as a channel. Why even talk about retail? We're at an e-commerce conference. Well, again, if you go out in the marketplace, you're going to see Magento itself has um, retail associate platforms, order management systems that are geared towards um, helping solve this, this puzzle. So is retail really dead? Um, well, Mark Andreessen, inventor of, uh, of the browser, really influential um, VC in the, in the Valley, a person of strong opinions. Retail guys are going out of business. E-commerce will be the place that everyone buys. He said that uh, a couple years ago. Um, you know, uh, Mark, sorry, you're wrong. Um, <laughs> So, so um, retail is transforming certainly under the pressure of digital technologies, just like every other sector of the economy. But it's interesting to think about Silicon Valley is not where the innovation in e-commerce and multi-channel commerce um, is happening. It's really happening in places like LA and New York. It's outside of the, the valley. I don't think these guys have the, the um, best perspective. But so let, let's contemplate this. Is, uh, is retail really dead? Can everyone read that, or you in the back? Should I, should I read this out for you? Um, I will, I, I asked rhetorically. Poor guy sitting on the bench, looking stressed. Times are tough, so I'm bargain shopping online for Christmas this year. And uh, the other guy says, well, what field are you in? The guy says, retail. Um, so, so there are some pretty compelling stats to, to think about that would suggest that retail is in trouble. This is a trend line showing um, e-commerce as a percentage of retail sales. As of about um, uh, end of 2015, it was about e-commerce, online commerce, 7.5% seven of, of total retail sales. And you can see that trend line is, is going, going, going. And if you believe, um, you could believe that that's going to go on for uh, forever. Um, this is what Black Friday is supposed to look like. Certainly, this is the, the picture of, of what we have in mind. This um, most recent Black Friday weekend season, you had 103 million people purchasing things online. 102 million people go, uh, going in store to purchase. It's the first time in the US in, in history that you've had more people buying things online than you've had um, uh, going into store to, to buy them. So clearly at a, at a little inflection point. This is also looking at Thanksgiving and Black Friday, the traditional um, big shopping weekends in the, in the US. So you can see online revenues, 2.8 billion, up about 14%. Same exact weekends, um, uh, in-store retail, 10.4 billion. Um, dropping. Now, the systemic growth rate in e-commerce is actually slowing, but it's still significantly higher, obviously, than, than the decline that we're seeing in, in retail. Um, let's talk about mobile for a second, another huge theme that all of us are used to hearing lots and lots about. We really are at an inflection point when we, when we think about mobile. If you think about the rest of the world, we're basically they skipped the web, so you look at places like China, for example. Mobile is just, uh, you know, everything is happening on mo mobile devices, including, including commerce. But even here in the U.S., mobile, mobile accounted for 36% of online sales during Black Friday, 50% of uh, online traffic on Black Friday, and that, those statistics are up about 30% since last year. What's interesting is if you even go a little bit deeper into that, you look specifically at smartphones. So our little tiny devices here, which, which many of us um, have dismissed as, as shopping devices, smartphones actually accounted for 21% of that at, of that online traffic, um, uh, uh, online sales, excuse me, and, and almost 50% of the online traffic is coming from smartphones. So if you want to look at Japan and China and places like that, you can really see where this is going. But we definitely have hit a, a tipping point um, with phones. On the other hand, maybe retail isn't dying. So um, nice quote here from the CEO of, um, 
of eBay. You know, the death of retail has been much exaggerated. So let's flip that 7.5% number around and recognize that that means that 92%, oh, uh, more than 92% of, of sales in, in uh, the U.S. still occur in physical retail. It's still a huge, huge number. It's, it's transforming. It's not dying. So um, some stats here. 50% um, of e-commerce sales are actually captured by merchants with an online physical store. So traditional retailers who've gotten into e-commerce are doing very well with, with e-commerce. Um, 68%, this is a statistic many of us have heard, 68% of um, sales that happen in a store are influenced digitally. This, and remember, we're talking about a huge market. Global retail sales, $22 trillion market. So it's a, the, the symbiosis that is happening between the online and offline channels is, is, uh, is huge. Um, and then finally, if you're not convinced, Customers who shop in more than one channel have, uh, there's all kinds of different statistics out here, but here's one from IDC, have a 30% higher lifetime value um, as customers relative to, uh, uh, relative to customers that, that shop in only a, a, single, a single channel. So let's agree it's not either or, but it's both, and when you toss in things like kiosks and all these other things and so forth that we're going to start to see, um, whatever the next big, big thing is, it, it really is this symbiotic relationship between all these channels, and, and that brings us back to my theme of unification, of being unified. So um, I'm going to switch gears now here, and if we could queue up the Prezi, um, that would be great. What I want to do now is I want to try and overwhelm you with sort of a view from the trenches of someone trying to really deliver a unified customer experience, what they're contending with. And this is now from the perspective of, uh, of a merchant. So um, I've got a, a Prezi queued up for, for you guys. I, could I have a volunteer or someone? I need someone to just throw five minutes uh, on, on their timer, because I don't want to take too long. OK, thank you. Start now. Um, OK, I don't expect you to absorb all of this, but this is based on a real model that we walk through with our, with our clients. So we start thinking about, OK, what's the big, the big picture? OK, we're starting to think about omni-channel now. And, and I really don't want you to try to like parse all of this, read as quickly as you can, of course. But I just want you to get a sense for kind of um, the, the scope of the undertaking here. So if you have physical stores, you might have brick and mortar locations. BOPAS, buy online, pick up on store, this is something that you're probably thinking about. And it's absolutely a key omni-channel use case, but it's only one. Right, So there's a lot of focus on, on this kind of stuff, but it, it's really only one. So as we get into this, this whole omni-channel um, commerce strategy where, again, the purpose is to create this unified customer experience, um, really, there you go. There's the key thing is, is the customer itself. And so you're going to hear this, this concept, cu customer journey, understand your customer. And the, that's always been true in, in retail and sales, but the, the reason it's so important now is because the engagement with the customers has really moved to them. It's, it's no longer you, your site, your store as the destination. It's really the customer now is the, is the, des uh, is the destination. So um, when you're thinking about omni-channel, you start thinking about, okay, what channels is my, is my product available through? How do I rationalize those? How do I harmonize those? We've got a social channel, right? So you're presumably doing email marketing, um, very, uh, very, um, effective means still, incredibly effective uh, way of, of marketing, paid advertising, paid search, all of these things, um, social engagement. So uh, you want to understand where your customers are. Are they on Instagram um, and all the rest? And so th these, are, these are kinds of analyses that we're going through with our customers. Some of it is data that, that they may have themselves. Um, some of it is stuff that we go out and find via user research. I'm going to talk about that in just a second. So your on-site experience. Okay, we're, we've got technology decisions that have to be made. We're talking about um, understanding the user experience and so on and so forth. So, so you, can, you can 
tell that this is a big, big topic that we're, that we're talking about here. And I'm just going to click, click, click. So let's go ahead and return to the presentation and kind of pick up the thread of, um, of where we were. So, so that is kind of an exercise that we go through with customers who are trying to create this unified customer experience to get to a point where we can really start to identify what for them is the, is the low-hanging fruit. Um, so to deliver a unified customer experience, you need a unified um, commerce platform. Right today, as I said, this, this notion of channels is, is artificial. It's something that, um, that businesses have, have to contend with because of operational silos or, or things like that. But the customer doesn't see, perceive themselves as being in channels. They're just trying to do what they want to do on the device that they uh, want to use at the time that they want to do it, where and when, and all of, all of uh, those kinds of things. So if you think about it, you know, 20 years ago, the shopping journey was very simple. Maybe you heard some advertising, you went to a store, you made a purchase. You think about it today, it's very fragmented and very complex. And this is what your customer is trying to, um, trying to navigate. Um, again, up until very recently, only a few uh, merchants and retailers were able to do this well. Companies like Nordstrom's, inter interestingly, about 21% of Nordstrom's sales um, are from e-commerce today, although a far lower percentage of their, of their profits. Uh, also interesting about Nordstrom is that they've really, they're kind of an inno innovator in this space. They've embraced this notion of giving born online or online born brands space in their, in their store. So if you walk into a uh, Nordstrom store, you might see sort of a, a Bonobos or Bobble Bar or Soul Society, which by the way, all started life as uh, on earlier versions of Magento. But you might see them in, um, in, in the Nordstrom's stores. Um, so they are really a nice, uh, a nice example of, of innovation. But, but with the exception of, of an example like that, or conversely, some pilot programs that, uh, that you see that are, are interesting, Really what we're seeing primarily today is something that you might call faux omnichannel. And Boston retail partners in a recent report had this to say about, uh, about the state of omnichannel. So unified commerce goes beyond omnichannel, putting customer experience first, breaking down the walls between internal channel silos and leveraging a single commerce platform. So, and there, you know, again, you get this notion of unified commerce platform. It combines point of sale, mobile, web, call center, all these, all these different things. So, so I want to now transition to, okay, how do you start to really operationalize this stuff? If you're, if you're a mere mortal merchant and you're not uh, one of these um, department stores like Nordstrom's or Macy's that has a lot of uh, resources to throw at that. So it's not even that this revolution is customer driven. It's really customer led. Customers are out in front on, on this particular um, revolution that, that's happening. And, and what's important to understand here is what your own customers want. Because a lot of merchants with stores, for example, are prioritizing things like ship from stores, which makes sense if, you, if you're a retailer because you may realize operational efficiencies, cost savings, and, and things like that. But um, that doesn't really map necessarily to what customers want. So you really have to understand what your customers want. So, so here's some recent research that shows what customers are prioritizing. And I'll just give you some of these stats here. Top priorities for customers, 86% of them want to know when something's going to arrive, whatever the, the touch point is. 71% want to know about in-store in, uh, availability of inventory in stores. 64% want to know where are physical stores located. And then significantly, 51% of them want a unified account that goes across um, all channels. So there's that word again, unified. But now let's, let's look and actually see um, what, what merchants are prioritizing, because there's lots of research out there that's showing actually that there's a disconnect here. So in a comparable poll of merchants, only 2% cited a unified account as a key priority for them. If you think about the previous slide, 50% of customers rate that um, very, uh, as a very high priority. Um, 
But merchants are really prioritizing this notion of ship from store, which doesn't necessarily add a lot of value to uh, uh, the customer experience per se. Here's another piece of research, this time from Forrester, um, same sets of, of types of questions and information that, that was asked for, again, showing the same type of priorities that, that um, merchants have. Shockingly to me, if you look down, almost at the bottom is a cross-channel channel loyalty and rewards program, which, as far as I'm concerned, is the most effective thing that you can do to, to get customers to engage with you across all these um, different, different channels. Um, OK, just a real quick aside. Even if you're a pure play online um, brand like Bonobos, let's say, or Warby Parker, again, both Magento um, clients, they're starting to experiment now with physical retail. So Bonobos and Warby Parker are both having a lot of success with, Bonobos calls them guide shops, for example. These are, are they're starting to open them around the, the country. They're very highly branded, but they have no inventory in the store. You just go in and try things on, which turns out to be very important when you're, you know, if you're a guy picking out a suit or you want to try on a, a, a pair of glasses to see how they look. Once that sale is made, the fulfillment happens through a, um, an e-commerce optimized type of, type of channel. And so, again, you're seeing this symbiosis between, um, between these channels. It's not either or, and I already showed you the, the quote from Andy Dunn um, earlier. So, so um, the, the point I wanted to try and make there is that while, while retailers with physical stores are rushing to turn them into mini distribution centers, which is hard to do well, you've also got online uh, retailers that are actually starting to open up physical stores. And I think this is the type of transformation we're going to see in retail. And we can expect over the next five, 10 years that the composition of malls and things like that is really going to change as you, as you um, see this continuing. So, when we're talking about a unified customer experience, what is it that we're really trying to unify? There's basically three things. So there's a unified payments and shopping cart um, that persists across channels, unified view of the customer, and then a unified view of inventory. And all of these things require this magical thing called a um, unified commerce platform. So I don't have time to go through every single one of these, uh, all three of these in detail. I want to spend most time on talking about the um, inventory piece, but just looking at them a little bit in turn. So with unified payments, what we're really trying to achieve here is, is what we might think of as the one-click for the, uh, the one-click buy button everywhere. So, you know, we're all familiar with what, what Amazon has, uh, has done online. And so when we're talking about kind of this unified payment idea, what we're, what we're, what we're saying is that the, we need to take the transactions to where the customers are, not just the interactions and the engagement uh, points. And this is something that a lot of people in the industry are starting to um, call distributed commerce, distributed commerce, this idea that a purchase decision can happen any place that a customer is, again, taking it uh, to the, to the customer. When you think about unified payments, Braintree, the great Magento partner, their extension is uh, Magento 2 ready already. PayPal, we heard about this morning, we heard about going um, sort of cashless um, mobile um, payments. Magento's got their retail associate platform, which is a um, mobile, really I'd call it an MPOC, a mobile point of commerce. Um, uh, so gift, uh, cross-channel gift cards and coupons. These are all the kinds of things that we're striving for when we talk about um, unified payments. Unified view of the customer, the goal here is to try and recognize a customer as early as we can and continue to recognize them in whatever channel it is that they, they pop up in as they go down the road. Now, um, there's this notion of a creepiness cliff and people are always imagining we're about to fall off the creepiness cliff. Um, personalization shouldn't be done just because you can, it should be done because it serves a need for the customer. But what's also interesting is that things that seemed creepy six months ago actually very quickly come to be seen as absolutely essential in the shopping journey. Um, 
So another just stat I'll throw out there for you from Forrester, two-thirds of customers now expect a, a um, associate in-store to be armed with some kind of mobile device. So um, again, this, this expectation that, that customers have, they keep, the, you know, just they're out in front. We have to keep trying to play catch up. But this idea of, of kind of this unified view of the customer, we might say that checking in starts to become as important as, as checking out. Um, so today, if you think about it, this might be a typical customer experience where a customer has to identify herself over and over again depending on which channel they happen to be shopping in. And again, remember channel is a completely um, business-driven concept. You can imagine the irritation of a customer who maybe had a bad experience the night before or created a shopping basket the night before, goes to a store or calls the call center and expects to be recognized and expects to um, uh, have that person who's interacting with them know know what they are. So this is really what we're what we're striving for is this unified view of the customer, where Pam in this example is able to say, "Hi, I'm Pam," and she just has to say that once, and then there we go. And um, and there's going to be a variety of technology and operational um, solutions for for how you how you get to that. So let's talk about inventory. This is really, actually, if we could go back one, I'm sorry. So today, if you're a multi-channel merchant, you probably have inventory scattered all over the place. Um, you may be drop shipping. You may have it in a warehouse. Um, you may have a completely separate fulfillment channel for your physical stores. If you have physical stores, then your, then your online store. And these are probably scattered in multiple technology systems as well that all grew up over time to serve the needs of, of these different channels that you have. The, for you as a business, and also for the customer, it would be great if they knew that they could see that, wow, there's six in my store, there's 50 that I have on my online warehouse and so forth. The customer, it's almost like our fiduciary responsibility to make sure that if we have an item, we can sell it to that, that customer. And so the fact that it's in some different channel shouldn't be an impediment any longer to being able to close that, close that sale. If you have um, stores, the situation is even worse because you may have inventory that's on its way to the dressing room or crumpled up in the dressing room or getting ready to be reshelved or on its way to checkout. And now you multiply that times every, every store that you have. The reason why getting inventory right is so important is that the use cases for um, a unified inventory are just proliferating. It seems like every day someone invents some new use case for why inventory, why a view of inventory has to be um, created. Now, I'm not saying you have to centralize your inventory physically. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying you have to have a centralized, or to use our word, um, unified view of your, of your inventory. And I'm sure all of these are starting to look, um, look familiar to us, and, and uh, like I say, there's more being invented every day. Really what we're talking about here is buy anywhere, get anywhere. So if you want to summarize this whole slide, it's that customers want to buy anywhere and get anywhere. So that's really a challenge to, to businesses that have grown up with, with multiple channels. So um, where are we in all of this? So here's a, um, a little staircase that shows where retailers are along the curve to adopting a unified commerce platform, which is, the, is really the holy grail of what we're talking about here. So the good news for, for you, if you're a merchant um, in the room today, is that you're not necessarily behind your peers. So if, if you look at the chart here to my left or to the left of the, um, of the stairs is where people are in terms of early exploration um, and it moving right uh, to the right, we're starting to actively think about plans, we're starting to actively put together budgets, strategy, we're getting ready to go into execution, and then we get up to the, the right, and you can see it's a relatively small percentage of retailers who are actually already rolling out a unified commerce platform. So 
we're, you know, hopefully you're somewhere in the sweet spot um, in the middle there, but keep in mind you're playing catch up with your, with your customers. So you may not be um, behind your competitors or your peers, but customers are already far, far along that curve in terms of, uh, of what they expect. Now, Magento with digital commerce, the retail associate platform, and M-commerce, their order management system, it's a fantastic down payment on this concept of a, of a unified commerce platform. But you're still going to have all of these loosely coupled systems, probably ERP, warehouse management, um, financial systems, logistics, and all of those things. So you still are going to have to get into a lot of um, systems in integration. So I want to give you... Um, a roadmap here that this is drawn from direct experience with our uh, omni-channel clients and the ones who've executed well on this are the ones that we see having a lot of um, success. I'm talking about companies, I'm going to kind of do a composite here just so that we can take best practices from, from all of them, but they would include um, a very upscale women's fashion company with hundreds, hundreds of stores across the U.S. and internationally. Um, one of them actually is one of the early Magento 2.0 launches uh, through the beta program. Um, we did the, the largest of the early Magento 2 releases. Um, and you don't have to memorize this uh, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run through it in, in uh, sort of one by one. So here's the top 10 list. We've got eight minutes to go. I think I can, I can get through it. So forming a steering committee. This is, this is absolutely um, the number one imperative. So this has to be cross-functional. The goal, remember, is we're trying to break down silos. So you're going to need representatives from every single department that's going to be impacted by... Uh, um, by, by this revolution. Sometimes it's going to look like this, with everybody having a piece um, of the steering wheel. <clears throat> but it's absolutely essential. And so at a minimum, you're, going to have, you're probably going to have IT, e-commerce, probably marketing, maybe logistics, maybe finance um, uh, on, on your steering committee. And here are some of the things that that steering committee might be doing. Obviously, they're going to be having meetings, so they're going to be um, you know, creating their project statuses and so forth. They're going to be tracking the budget once we get into the implementation uh, phase. Um, they're the ones who are probably putting the RFP together and driving the vendor selection. Um, and so one key thing is to have really strong project management. The companies that have really strong project management backed by the steering committee are the ones who are achieving the most success. And then having executive buy-in is also incredibly important. So what we've seen is that typically a monthly meeting cadence with the, with the whole steering committee, you've got the project managers who are off doing the day-to-day, -day, and then probably a quarterly check-in with the executives who are ultimately greenlighting the, the uh, project. Um, customer research. So we talked about uh, the importance of the customer journey. I'd like to give you a couple, a couple um, ways that we found to be effective to go out and actually get that customer information. So recall this chasm that I illustrated earlier between customer expectations and, and merchant priorities. What we're trying to do, obviously, is bridge the gap between, uh, between those things. So one classic technique would be user research. And here we have the classic, uh, the developer watching through the one-way mirror as someone tries to use the interface and getting incredibly upset, because clearly that's not the way you're supposed to use it. But as, as one of my colleagues says, if you have to explain an interface, you know, it's like a joke that you have to explain. It isn't a good, uh, it isn't a good interface. But there really are some good ways to get at this customer um, data. One is there's a company called 4C. They do um, a multi-channel expectation, multi-channel customer expectation analytics where they're basically gathering all this information on the demographic of uh, customer that, that you um, specify for them. Another one is the classic watch customers um, interacting with, with, uh, with a online um, device. Another one is what we call in the wild studies, which can be as simple as sending someone out into the world with a mobile device and asking them to have their camera and their video out and you give them some task like, um, you know, go find and pay for a particular item of clothing in a, in a store, but request that it, it be uh, delivered to you at home and record what that experience 
looks like. So this voice of the customer idea, it's very important um, to, to get that right. So it's, it really is all about the, um, the customer journey. Number three, competitor research. I'm not going to go into that one. I think that's pretty obvious. You're, you're going to know who your competitors are, and you're going to want to take a survey of, uh, of what, their, what their capabilities are. Um, goals and success metrics. This is something that the steering committee is going to be very important um, at doing, is defining how do we know if we're actually achieving our goals and, and being successful, and then communicating that within the, within the organization. Now, on the technology front, you might be wondering, where do I buy a unified commerce platform? And the answer is you can't. It doesn't exist. There's elements of it. And again, what Magento has done, for example, is a really nice down payment on, on that. Um, but it, 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 I can't really show you a systems integration diagram for, um, for a client, you know, a real client without compromising um, an NDA. But typically, this spaghetti is kind of what, what most of us are, are facing today. You'll notice Magento isn't on this chart, and that's by design, because Magento and their systems really is a centralizing and simplifying um, part of the solution here. And um, interestingly, 30% of merchants planning to roll out some kind of unified commerce platform are planning to make commerce be the hub as opposed to, say, point of sales or ERP or some of these other. 30% um, are, are going to make commerce the hub that's far higher than, um, uh, than any other of those technologies. Organizational realignment. Very, very difficult. Not a technology issue. But if you think about it, again, when we're thinking about silos, culture and org charts and employee incentive programs, and all of those things, um, uh, P&Ls, revenue attribution, all of these things right now are stacked against trying to deliver this, this uh, unified customer experiencing, experience that we're talking about. We spend a lot of time with our clients trying to work through um, these types of issues with them. One interesting example, 90% of uh, clients rolling out some kind of unified commerce platform are planning to consolidate their consumer-facing um, IT Training staff across all, all channels. Um, I got a quote here that I'll, I'll read to you. Um, Store traffic doesn't matter as much as overall customer conversion across channels. Customers are voting with their feet as they shop more online. And for multi-channel retailers, that means the need for an increasingly focused, curated, and engaging brick and mortar store experience that creates maximum conversion. And here's the headline, no matter what ch channel ultimately records the, the purchase. So if your store associates view online as the enemy, they're not going to actually work along with this. So we have to be thinking about a complete conversion path that all works together, that pulls all those channels together. And it's going to be very difficult to attribute what caused that ultimate um, uh, purchase action, and we have to get away from caring about that and caring more about the, the total experience. Um, so I wanted to end with something light here. Stay agile and, and, and patient. We got the sleeping leopard in the tree here. And if you think about how a, uh, you know, think about a leopard and think about that relative to what I'm talking about here, and you think about they're very opportunistic. Right, so they're going. They're they're on the lookout for for opportunities. They um, they follow their prey, and I don't want to draw a direct analogy between customers and prey, but the prey <laughs> is is leading them on. They fail early. They don't put a lot of energy, um, wasted time into into things. So fail early and and often. And then obviously these these creatures are are nothing if not if not agile. So I just want to leave you with two thoughts then. One is, really, as you go into this, if we're talking about transforming, revolutionizing the customer experience, that has to be customer-led. So you have to understand what it is your customers want and really cater to that. And, you, and that means that everybody in this room is going to have a different journey because everyone in this room's customers are, are different. And then this idea of being agile. And so I know there's been a, a, a lot that I've thrown at you here, but instead of thinking about, OK, which bet do I make? Which technology do I bet on? Which scenario do I, I bet on? Um, 
really what you want to be thinking about is how do I create a culture of agility and innovation within my organization and then set up success metrics that reward those things. Get the technology right so that you can be nimble and try these things. You can't be hamstrung by your technology. But that's going to be a process that you're going to be chipping away at. But you have to get everybody on board in your organizations with this, this whole concept. Because at the end of the day, this unified customer experience, that's what the customers, that's what our customers expect today. And it's only going to get more so and more so as we, as we go on. So thank you very much.